Hey everyone, Phil Malone here again with some more FTC Android development tips. When I first found out about the fact that we we're going to be using these phones on our robots, the first thing I wanted to find out was how do we go about deploying code while we're testing to the robots without having to resort to the USB cable. When my team's developing new autonomous code, we probably download new versions 20 or 30 times an hour. And if we had to plug and unplug the USB cable every time, it'd drive us crazy. Plus, wear and tear on the cables themselves would be pretty bad. So, um, it was one of the questions I asked on the FTC forum, and uh, Jerry McManus had some great information about how to set up your laptop to communicate, to do debugging with these phones wirelessly. I played around a bit and have really found out there's three different ways you can configure um, your development environment to give you wireless communication. So I'm just going to step over those uh, those three. So when it comes to connecting your development computer, be it a desktop or a laptop, to the phone, there's three methods that I've established that you can use to do it. The first two of these actually have the same physical hookup but require slightly different software configurations. The third method requires different hardware. So I'm going to deal with the first two because they're similar. So if you imagine you've got your phone in your robot and there's a plug on here. You've also got a laptop or desktop where you're doing your code development. In the first two scenarios, one and two, there's also a router involved. So this is more like perhaps a classroom situation or a school situation where you don't have wireless cards in your laptops. So um, this setup requires a connection between the laptop and the router. This can be wired or it can be wireless, but this is the assumption. Then the radio in the phone communicates with the router. One of the reasons that this scenario is an advantage is because your router can be configured to always assign the same IP address to the phone and that makes ultimately connecting the Android Development Studio to the phone it makes it easier because the ADB likes to know the IP address of the device you're connecting to. So, unfortunately the only problem with all three of the scenarios is at some point you initially have to have a hardwired connection. So to start the whole process off, you need to physically plug between your laptop, computer, or whatever, and the phone. That connection is required to get things going. Once that's connected with USB, then you can establish the wireless connection, and then you can cut this bridge uh, and do everything else wireless from then onwards. So if you were doing three or four hours of debugging or testing or coding, you'd connect up the USB once, configure the wireless, and then disconnect it. And that'll stay established until you shut down your laptop or you, you basically uh, reset the, uh, the ADB wireless connection. So this is method one and two. The difference between approaches one and two are that approach one, you assume that your router has established a fixed IP address for the phone. Many routers, once a phone or a device connects to them once, it tries to hold that same IP address. And every time they reappear, it gives them that same IP address. So if you can set up this situation, this probably works better for a small home or office or, or workshop area, then you can use method one, because one is the easiest. Um, and all you need to do is uh, edit a, a small batch file. And then every time you want to connect, you just run that batch file and it will establish the wireless connection for you. So method number two, is a little variation that is in the situations where you can't always guarantee the same IP address being assigned to the phone. For example, if you're in a school or a, or a larger facility where that address changes, it means that each time you establish your first connection, um, you need to look at the phone to find out what IP address was assigned to it and then tell that IP address to the setup script that's running to establish the wireless connection. So it's essentially the same hardware configuration, but it just puts one more step in the process. The third configuration is the slightly more difficult one to set up, but if you can do it, uh, it's also very convenient. So once again, we have our phone, so this is method three. We have our phone in our robot. We have our laptop. It's a pretty funny looking laptop. Uh, and in this situation, if your laptop has a wireless card, so it has its own antenna internally, and your phone 
is wireless. You don't need a router anymore. No router, not necessary. You can do a direct connection between your computer and the phone. Now this is not Wi-Fi direct, which is what the phones do to each other. This is actually what Microsoft calls a managed network. It's essentially setting up a hotspot on your laptop. So you can run a few commands to set up a managed network. You give it its name and you give it a password. And then on your phone, you can tell your phone to connect to that network. And now you have a direct Wi-Fi connection that enables you to go through the similar process that we use in method one and two. You still need to start with the USB connection to get the ball rolling, but once you sever that connection, now you've got a direct point to point. This method requires you to manually enter the IP address of the phone into the script running on the laptop because the managed network uh, there does not appear to be any way to uh, give it a fixed IP address to the phone or it does and it does not remember uh, the IP address that it last assigned to that device so every time you connect the phone up to the laptop using the managed network you will probably get a different IP address so uh, that's process number three so um, I'm going to do separate, three separate videos for each of these modes and they're going to be color coded in the video so that modes one, mode one is going to be red, mode two is going to be green and mode three is going to be blue. So if you want to fast forward to the video to the red, green or blue uh, title pages, it'll show you how to set up each one of these connections. Um, the other thing I've done is I've provided three batch files that actually run this processes that says you have to remember the commands and type them in they have been uploaded into Google Drive and the link for that folder is uh, in the text that goes along with this message. So uh, go there, download the, the file that you want and then you can run that to help set up these connections. All right, so we're gonna, let's move on and let's start with the method number one. This is the easiest of the three wireless setups to do. Uh, it does make the more, most assumptions, but if you can satisfy those assumptions then this is the easiest way to do it and those assumptions are in this case is that the laptop and the phone are attached to the same wireless router uh, and that that router is able to lock in the IP address of the phone once it's been assigned a dynamic address once most routers will hold that IP address so that when the phone disconnects and connects later it has the same IP. Um, the reason that that's an advantage is that you can modify the startup script to include the phone's IP address so that at the click of a button you can configure everything to work without having to uh, look things up and enter information. So this is this the precursor. So what we're going to do here is just check that everything is uh, looking good here. Uh, the laptop is connected to the uh, HackMe network and uh, we're just going to verify that the phone is also connected. So I'm going to zoom in. We're going to click settings bring up Wi-Fi, hack you, is connected and we'll verify the IP address. In this case it's down below here and you see that the IP address on this phone is 10.0.0.33. That's um, an IP address that's been handed out by my um, Xfinity router in my home um, and the script that I'm going to show you has had that IP address entered into it. Every time this phone connects it's given the same IP address and that's the easiest way to do things. So we're just going to uh, happily accept that and move on. Alright, so just a quick look at the script itself. Uh, this script is uh, basic, simple text, uh, not very easy to see here on the screen. Uh, but this script is downloadable from the uh, Google Drive that's linked to this video's text. So if you scroll down to look at the text, you can link. And this is the wireless router fixed.bat file. And this is just, you can download it and put it on your, uh, your hard drive in your computer. And what I like to do is add a shortcut to it to the desktop so it's easier to call up and it has comments in the beginning and then has a, a one prompt in the middle uh, to uh, make sure that you've got everything plugged in. So we're just going to shut this down here. Uh, I actually have an icon associated with this. It's the wireless fixed router icon and I have several here. I have a wireless router DHCP and I have a wireless hosted which are three other two other options that we can use here. 
whenever debugging wirelessly, I always prefer to start uh, Android Studio first before I make any of the wireless connections. This way, uh, the program's up and running, and once the connection is made, uh, the Android Studio holds on to it. If you do it the other way, if you make the connection before you start Android Studio, sometimes Android Studio tends to reset the connection and then you have to do it again anyway. So uh, just force a habit, start Android Studio. One of the other things that I like to do is that once Android Studio comes up, is I like to have it display the connection screen so we can always tell what it thinks is connected. And it's easy to do by going down to the left hand side. We do this by going down to the bottom and clicking on the Android tab. You see it initializes the ADB. And will tell us whenever we have a device connected. So if I go up here and run the script, I'm going to do this as supervisor just in case it needs any permissions. Oh, sorry, as administrator. So yes. Now you'll see the script has come up here and is prompting us. It says make sure the phone is connected to the router. So we can verify this by going to the settings, Wi-Fi, select the network that's currently attached, and at the bottom it says the IP address is 10.0.0.33. Uh, that is the address that's always assigned to this phone when it connects to the router. So we've ensured that the IP address matches the script. Also we need to make sure the phone is connected to the computer. The oddity is that you need to connect through USB first in order to connect wirelessly. Um, have not been able to find a way around this at this point. Uh, it's just what it has to be. Uh, and then once we're ready to go we can hit enter on the keyboard and it is uh, restarting the server. Connected in USB mode, it counts down just to make sure your phone has plenty of time to attach, and then it's going to switch over to TCP IP wireless. It's going to wait for that to attach, and then it's going to um, attach the phone using its IP address. And you see it's saying connected to 10.0.0.33, list of devices attached, and it's showing us what it's currently attached here. The interesting thing here is that it shows two devices. Let me zoom in here. The first device, which has the 2A, 2C, 8C, 9, is actually the USB connection. And the next device is the IP, is the one wireless connection, 10.0.0.33.5555, and it currently says offline. This threw me for a while, but the offline means that it's actually connecting through the USB, and the wireless is offline because it does not need two connections. You'll see a prompt down below here. It says unplug the phone and hit enter to see the final connection. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pick the phone up, I'm going to unplug it, put the phone back here. Now there's no longer a USB connection, but the Wi-Fi connection should still be good. So I'm going to hit the enter key and it's going to display it. And it says list of devices attached and it's only showing the one device. And then it times out. So at this point, the phone is attached. Now if we were watching over here, while all this was happening, we'd be seeing the connections showing up in this box here. Right now there is one connection, but before we unplugged the USB, we would have had two connections. In fact, if I plug it back in again, and now have a look here, there's actually two connections. Unfortunately, uh, they both say exactly the same thing here, so it's really kind of hard to tell them apart. But what will happen is at the point where you try and download your application, if I do that right now, Uh, it will build and it'll show us options as to where we want to download it and at that screen you can clearly see which device is which. So I'm just going to let this build here. Uh, it's building a little Wi-Fi direct testing application which was great for verifying that the phones could talk to each other. And now it's popped up the screen here. Now if you have a look here, you'll see there's actually two devices listed as choices. The first one has a serial number that happens to be the IP address and the second one has the serial number which was the uh, USB port that we saw. If I unplug the USB port, you see that one went away and now we only have a wireless connection. So right now if I select that and say OK, 
it will wirelessly download it in. And I'm going to go back to the phone over here so we can watch what happens. So here's the phone. So I'm going to say OK. And it's going to directly replace this icon up here with this new version. And it will now reset it. It's deleted it. We'll add it back in again. And then execute it. So here's the Wi-Fi Direct app that we just uh, developed and downloaded. And this can be done over and over again uh, while the robot, while the phone is on the robot. So it saves you having to unplug and plug in at this point. You just have to do the one USB connection at the beginning, and then once, as long as you keep your sessions alive, uh, you can download new apps wirelessly. I'm now going to illustrate the second method for connecting wirelessly to do debugging uh, on the Android phone. This method is uh, a little less straightforward than the first method, m only because this method assumes that um, your router, if you are connected to a router, does not always give your phone the same IP address, so you need the opportunity to enter the IP address that you want to connect to during the initial setup process. So as always, I like to start Android Studio first, uh, so that it, uh, when we establish the wireless connection, uh, Android Studio does not attempt to reset it. One of the other things I like to do is I like to show the active um, connection for debugging the ADB interface uh, while I'm doing this stuff. So that's pretty easily to set up. If we look down the bottom here, there's a option here that says Android. If you click on Android, it will start up the screen that initializes the ADB and then will always show the currently connected device or devices over here in this left pull down. Currently there's nothing connected because we're neither plugged in nor hooked up wirelessly. Alright, so now I'm going to go over and I'm going to select the second of our batch files which is the wireless router DHCP. This assumes that both the phone and the laptop are connected to a wireless router uh, the laptop can be connected wirelessly or hardwired to the router, it doesn't matter. Uh, but this will let us establish a connection to the phone in the robot. Uh, unfortunately, we're always going to have to attach a USB interface first to make the initial connection, and then we can disconnect that once we've set up the wireless. So I'm going to right-click on this batch file, and I'm going to say Run as Administrator. And it's going to complain because it's the first time I've done this, so I'm going to tell it to run it anyway. After the first time, it won't complain anymore. So, do I want to run this? Yes, I do. So, this is the, um, the prompt that come up when you run the wireless router DHCP. And it says, make sure the phone is connected to the computer via USB. And then, and hit enter when the phone is plugged in. So, we're going to do that first. We're going to plug the phone in. It'll make a hardwired USB connection. And if we look down below here, we'll see that. Uh, the Android phone, it's showing us up as a connection because it's now hardwired in, but that's only temporary. Right, so once we're plugged in, it's going to ask me to hit enter. So we're going to hit enter. It's going to restart the ADB server. It's going to let it sit there and stabilize, and then it is going to ask us to um, connect wirelessly. All right, so if we have a look here, it's restarted its wireless connection and now it says make sure your phone is also connected to the router network. Uh, click the settings Wi-Fi link to get the phone's IP address. Enter the IP address here. So that's what we're going to do. So settings Wi-Fi here's our network and if we have a look down the bottom, it says that my IP address is 10.0.0.33. In my case, this is always what the address is. But in, if you hooked up to a router which reassigns it every time, you just need to pay attention to what this number is here. Usually the first three digits are always the same. It's the last digit that, that changes, or the last set of four digits. Uh, so in this case, 10.0.0.33. So I have to remember that because it's, it's asking me to enter it over here on the batch file. So I'm going to type 10.0.0, uh, oopsie, I need to give it focus, 10.0.0.33. Once again, if you always get the same address to your phone, use the other batch file where you can hard code it in. So I'm now going to hit enter, 
and we see here it's giving me a nice data it's connected so it has physically connected and it's showing me the list of devices so the first device with the, the uh, seven digits here is actually the USB connection and the second device is um, the IP address so and it says offline the reason for the offline is because it's currently using the USB interface so the Wi-Fi interface is offline but the script will give us a chance to verify that it can talk Wi-Fi because it says unplug the phone and hit enter to see the final connection so if I unplug the phone now uh, in theory it's communicating wirelessly and we can verify that by hitting enter and now it shows us a lifted list of attached devices there's our IP address oh, and then was it said device uh, that only stays up there for five seconds and it goes away so currently if we look over here we still see we have a connection only one connection and yet the phone is disconnected no connection cable on the phone there um, I mentioned that it's uh, good to have this screen up so you can see the connections right now there's only one connection but if I plug the phone back in again for some strange reason you'll actually have both connections listed here you'll see they're the same uh, in fact they're exactly the same which is a little annoying uh, although when you go to download it will give the choice of which connection you want and then you'll be able to tell them apart uh, sometimes you may have two phones you may have one hardwired and one wireless so you need to know which one's which so I just told Android Studios to build and download this application and I'll show you that it uh, actually has two connections and how they look different all right whoa sorry so here you'll see there's two connections to the same device but at the serial number the top one shows the IP address so that's obviously the wireless connection and the bottom one shows that seven digit number which is the USB connection so if I unplug the USB again so you see that one went away and so there's only a wireless connection and once again the phone is unplugged now um, at which point I could select which one I want the wireless one say OK and uh, it'll download so here's the, the home screen of the phone and now it's going to pop up and uh, run my program which is a little Wi-Fi direct testing program so there you go, so downloading and debugging um, with a wireless connection on your phone. Alright, I now want to show you the third and final way to establish a wireless connection with your robot for development. Uh, as always, I like to start up the Android Studios ahead of time. This lets the uh, program hold the wireless connection uh, rather than requiring me to reconnect it once Android Studio comes up. So just an easy trick to start Android Studios ahead of time and then do your wireless hookup afterwards. The other thing I like to do is always have the uh, screen up showing me the current uh, connection for debugging and I do, do that by going down to the Android tab across the bottom hitting that and it will pop up the um, debugging window and if we look in the top left hand corner of that window we will see uh, any active devices and right now there are no current devices because we have neither a USB nor a radio connection alright so in this case we are using uh, the hosted network setup which does not require a router what's essentially happening is that your laptop is setting itself up as a hotspot and the phone will connect to that hotspot and then the uh, Android Studios will communicate with the phone over that connection. The only downside of this system is that the IP address that is assigned to the phone changes every time so there's no easy way to pre-configure it. You have to let it be assigned a number and then look up that number and then enter it in for the final connection. So in this case we're going to use the batch file called wireless hosted uh, which will set up this hotspot connection this connection has to be run as an administrator or in this batch file so right click and run it as an administrator it's going to ask us are we sure we want to do this and the first time we'll just say uh, yes run anyway and it won't ask us that anymore so then it will bring up the script that uh, does the job so there's some information here so the first thing it does is attempts to set up the hosted network or the hotspot on the computer 
this does require you to have a Wi-Fi card in your computer uh, and the status is reported here so it's doing a set of options first it, it, uh, it uh, restarts the connection um, it then sets it to the required mode uh, it sets it to allow I'm not quite sure what allow is but we, it's required it sets the uh, SSID uh, now in this script I have hard coded the ID to be um, Android Dev, you can make it whatever you like, that's basically going to be the name of the hotspot. Then you can put in a password. In my case I put in a password of Robots Rule. Uh, once again you can edit the script in any editor and change the uh, name of the hotspot and the password to suit whatever you like. Uh, the fact that this line here says the hosted network started is a good sign, that means that it's ready to go and we're ready to connect to it. We have a prompt here that says make sure our phone is connected to the computer via USB and then hit, the, hit enter when the phone is plugged in. So like always, we need to establish a USB connection first before we establish our wireless connection. So I plug that in. If you have a look down the bottom here, you'll see that we actually now have a, uh, a connection and that's a good sign. So that means that uh, everything should run just fine here. All right, so we plugged it in and we have to hit enter so the script can continue. So it's restarting the uh, ADB server and then it's going to wait a little bit and then it will switch over to a wireless connection and it will prompt us for the IP address of the phone. So it says it started the mode and it says now connect your phone to the Android Dev network. Once again Android Dev is just what I've set up in this script, you can make it whatever you like. Uh, and then we need to get the IP address of the phone and enter it. So we're going to go over to the phone here so you can see how to do this. It's very straightforward. So settings Wi-Fi. You see now there's an Android Dev. Uh, I've already entered this once before, so it should know the key. Nope, I need to put it in here. All right, we'll do this quickly. So this is whatever password you set up in your script. Now it should connect to the hotspot that the computer is generating. It's obtained an IP address and it's connected. So now we need to hit that link again to see the IP address and here it is 192.168.173.171 the first three seem to be pretty common the 173 I'm not quite sure what that I guess that's the Windows hosted network and then the 171 that number will change pretty much every time you do this so that's why we need to connect it and look at the screen so now I'm going to go over back to our script and enter that click over here to get focus all right, 192.168.173.171. Hit enter. All right, so here's our status. Connected, so the fact that it says connected means that it was able to establish a connection, and now it's listing the devices that are attached. The first one is actually the USB connection, and the second one is the IP address of the device and it says it's offline that is because it's already communicating with the USB so the wireless connection is offline if we have a look over here we can see that there are actually two connections available one is the offline wireless and one is the USB so to verify that we really can use the wireless we're going to follow the last prompt here that says unplug the phone and hit enter to see the final connection so I'm going to, so I'm going to do that I'm going to unplug the phone and hit enter and you'll see the list of devices now only show one device and it's not listed as offline anymore so we are now ready to go so if we go over here to our our developer studio so we're going to download this now see that we have the IP address as our serial number so that tells us we have a wireless connection we're going to go down to the phone down here I'm just going to hit OK so we'll build it and run it remembering that we are wirelessly, just wirelessly connected so right now it's just running a little Wi-Fi direct test app that I found and built and there we have it wireless debugging